All right, hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is May 25th, 2022. And if we have understood the seasons and times and years that we are in, we are like 20 days away before everything on earth begins to change forever. And man, is it ever getting heavy, right? It, it's it's weighty. It's We're seeing more and more happen around the world. You know, prayers for all of those families with uh, the Texas shooting. I mean, absolutely terrible. You know, some might say false flag. Some are, whatever it is they're saying, families are hurting. People have died and our prayers and goes out to those families. All right. So remember those, remember them in your prayers tonight and all of your brothers and sisters here in this ministry around the world as well. I know we don't know everybody individually, of course not, but man, we love you. We're with you. We're we're here and I do what I do to strengthen you guys, to encourage you. And 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 in this strengthening, it's this revelation. It's it's this drawing closer and delving deeper diligently into his word and getting to know him that gives us this strength, that gives us this, this power and drive to continue and to push forward in seeking him no matter what comes. And that's what we're doing. And that's what I will continue to do until the time comes. And then we'll see what happens after that. That's up to him. <laughs> We all know what I'm talking about there. But, you know, uh, let's remember that, all right? <clears throat> we are a lot of different people. You know, this ministry is over 8,000 people. Uh, people in the forum, we've got getting close to 1,000 people. Anybody wants to join us in the forum, that's over here. You can go to the website, go to the menu box, the forum. It'll take you a few seconds to sign up. It's free. And it's like-minded brothers and sisters in that forum sharing all sorts of things from family to 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 prayers to to man news and, and events and and scripture and understanding and questions and all sorts of things going on and they're from all over the world but one thing you got to remember when you're in there is not only is everybody from everywhere around the world but everybody has different personalities and we need to remember that we need to be mindful with each other right we don't all agree on everything. And I think that's a great thing to address. We don't all agree on everything, right? They didn't all agree when Christ was here either. It was God telling them and showing them and explaining them these things. And they still weren't always in agreement, right? So <clears throat> we have the foundation here in this ministry. We, we have come to, to understand, we have come to be revealed in this diligently seeking of the word, the, the open book. We've been given this revelation of the end of days that has been a mystery since the beginning of creation, revealed for this time as it was kept to be made known for the time of the end. That is truly, truly what has been going on in this ministry for four and a half plus years. And these foundations that we have, for anybody that's new, I want to let you guys know this right off the bat. It's this one right here. Come into the playlist. Come into this video series right here. And when you click on it, it's the intro to the end time gospels revealed. It's the first one. And it's about who the gospels are speaking to. This is priority number one. <laughs> because what we're going to be getting into today is going to go so far over your head if you don't understand the foundations that, that have been revealed here. If you don't have this foundation, you're just going to say, what on earth are these guys talking about? What on earth is he talking about? What do they think they're understanding in all these things? We go into a level of depth within the scriptures because we can understand something here in this ministry that started back in on September 8th of 2017. And it's the revelation of who the Gospels are speaking to. We have come to, to understand that Matthew, Mark, and Luke of the Synoptic Gospels are speaking to Luke as the Bride of Christ. 
Mark is speaking to the sleeping church or or the house of Israel to which the Gentiles are grafted into. They are called the world that Jesus came for. And Matthew, as many have known for a long time, is to the Jews. It's written to Judah. But all of our lives, the problem came in because we have all been taught with a foundation in the gospel of Matthew. So even though we didn't realize it, we all were being taught from Matthew, and a little bit of Mark and a little bit of Luke would get added in to, to, to fill in these gaps that seem to be apparent in those places in Mark. But the reality is, the three of them are speaking to different groups of people. And what you will find out in this intro series, a 30-minute video to begin to understand this revelation of who the Gospels are speaking to and its application to the end of days. And in this revelation of it in the end of days, it's not only about the end of days. It reveals all the way back to in the beginning. And we're going to be talking a little bit about that today as we build this and build this and build this to show you what we're going to be talking about. And when you see that, you're going to see that all of these things that you thought were contradictions in scriptures, like in the Gospels, that just weren't making sense and nobody could really explain it to you, you're going to be so filled with joy. You're going to be seeking the scriptures like you never have before because you're about to understand as you never have before. That's what you're going to find in this first intro video. And when you go to ministryrevealed.com and you, if you wanted to sign up to the forum, you can also just go to the website. And we wrote a book in 2000, I think 2021, in March of 2021, that you can read right from the website on the book page. Or you can download the PDF. Or if you want a paperback, you can go to Amazon. But it's available for free as well. And you can go in there and you could read chapter one to get more information on this revelation of who the Gospels are speaking to. I promise you it'll be worth every moment of your time. And this second piece, this second foundation that builds on the first one is the revelation of the 14 years. Because when you understand that Luke is the bride of Christ and she's pre-trib, when you understand that then Mark is speaking to the sleeping church, is, is speaking to the group that's left behind during seals. You say, wait a second. Everything I always understood was Matthew. And if Matthew is seven years, and you're telling me Mark is a separate group, and they were asleep, yeah, you guessed it. The tribulation, the end of days, is not seven years. It is 14 years. It is seven years of seals and seven years of trumpets. Seven, where, where the Jews will be removed from the land and the land will rest. And during that time, it'll all be against the Christians. It'll be against the world. And then when seals come to an end, it'll be the time of what everybody knows as Jacob's trouble or the time of tribulation, the, the Judah portion of trumpets. When you begin to understand these things, it blows your mind. And it's not like, oh, no, I got 14 years instead of seven. No, it's a joy. It's a blessing because that means it's seven years sooner. Do you understand? It means you the, the pre-trib group is going seven years earlier. And what you come to find out in this is that the story wasn't really only seven and seven of seals and trumpets, but that this story plays out after Jacob's story. That he worked seven years that flew by like days because he was so in love. He was so excited to work for her, expecting to get his Rachel. He was so excited that they flew by. The first seven years flew by like days. Those seven years are the seven years we are literally in the end of coming to. There, we are in that time right now before the next set of seven of seals and then seven of trumpets begins. And with all the revelation we've been given, all this, all of the connections and the understanding of the year counts and Leviticus and all of it, this Tishri will begin the 14 years. But the bride is gone in a portion called above 14 years. 
just like 2 Corinthians 12 2. This portion that the first one is in Christ and is gone above 14 years to the third heaven. This is how fascinating these intro videos are. And when you understand that it's not seven years, but that the end of days is really 14, and that the, the bigger picture is 21 years, but the first seven were, were fast passing, where the bride is being woken up in the spirit right now. You realize that the story is the last three sets of sevens, three, 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 that equals 21, in, in, the, in the story of Jacob that was 20, and then he makes a covenant, and that's the final year with Christ. So it's this 21-year story, and the 22nd and final year is jubilee and eternity in the, in the big picture. And so what happens? This is something we're going to talk about today and why I'm, I'm spending more time on this is because we're going to be talking a little bit more in depth about this today. It's something that I love because once you see this, once you begin to understand, it is freaky wild. It is so awesome. To be able to go all the way back to the beginning of creation. And people will tell you it's billions. And in the gap theory, that accounts for the billions or millions of years and everything else. Nope. The whole story. From in the beginning to the end of Revelation is 7,000, 7,000, 7,000 years. And the final jubilee, when the millennial reign is done is the beginning of the 22nd thousandth year and the all beginning of eternity. It's the whole story. And you say, what? Are you crazy? I've been told that my whole life that it's 7,000 years, that it's 7,000 from Adam and from the creation. Do you know why you believe that? For the same reason you believe that the tribulation is only seven years. You believe that because everything we have learned has been in the foundation, which is the perspective and the eyes of Matthew, which is to the Jews. So we try to line up everything with what the Jews think and with what the Jews know. And we go with this perspective because unknowingly everything we've been taught, even though we read the whole Bible, the foundation as Christians comes from the gospel of Matthew. And that will lead you into this video that is so important, this long one, the third video called It's All Because of Matthew. And when you realize this, this and what it talks about, I'm telling you, every single moment of this will be worth your time. You will understand things that you have had questions for, and then it brings about more questions, and you will get answers to most of those, if not all of them. But we don't have the answers to everything. But the next questions you might have that follow, well, we've already been there. So we've probably got those answers for you too. And it just continues. And it layers and it layers and it goes deeper and deeper and deeper. And we're going to talk about some of those things today. Because there was things just in the last couple of days talked about in the forum uh, in relation to things like what Jonathan Kleck teaches. You know, I, I've said in the past, what Jonathan Kleck has taught has been great because he has given people vision. He has given people the ability to see, but he doesn't understand the tribulation. He's focused on the pit, right? And that's okay. That's not his, that's not his area. His area is helping people see. And that's where he blessed me. For years, I had watched him in the past. I don't really so much anymore. Somebody might share something when we check in once in a while, but not too much anymore because we've moved on because with eyes to see, if you start applying them in the scriptures, things start to become more clear. See, and, and the reason I'm mentioning this with Clack is because as we go into this today, there was a conversation that was in the forum and I told them I was going to get into it as and use it to build into today's video because, you know, some people would say, oh, we're fallen angels and we've fallen and this is why. And it was the Elohim. I used to believe that because I had watched him too. And it made sense in a seven year or 7,000 year thinking. But when you come to understand these things we're talking about, 
And you see that the, the big picture is 21 and 22 years and, and that the end of days is 14 and then the 15th is that final jubilee. When you see these things, you will so much more clearly see the beginning. And we've got this incredible video called uh, it's, it's All a Fractal. Okay? It's all a fractal. And you're going to see more of that discussed today to see that it's it really is a fractal and a fractal and a fractal, this repeating pattern that is playing out. But I always like to preface it by using the example of, of, uh, uh, um, of Elijah and John. Okay, We know that Elijah came first in the time of Christ and it was John. But was John the same as Elijah? No. He was in that same spirit of Elijah, but Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind, whereas John the Baptist was beheaded. That's not exactly the same now, is it? Okay? It's typologies, but the patterns are there. And that's what we've been revealed in this ministry, to be able to see these patterns. And that's what we're going to go into. And, and that's why I say anybody that's new, you're going to need to see that playlist first and begin to understand those things because we are going deep, brothers and sisters. We are going to dig into this today. And I'm not fully sure what the, what the uh, title is, but we're going to get into it today. And it's really going to be about building and building and building to, to show something that many people have been saying, you know, they feel that that the understanding of pre, mid, and post is all connected to Passover. And, and for some people, it's hard to shake because, you know, even in the revelation of the 14 years, we show for those that are those that are newer, you can come watch this pre, mid, and post video, and we use the resurrection story is one of the illustrations that shows pre, mid, and post being all true. That there is a pre-trib, like a rapture, we call the escape, like Luke 21, 36 says. There is a mid-trib, great multitude rapture, and there is a post-trib return of the Lord, feet down. And there's typologies, prophetic revelation built in to the Gospels and in the resurrection story. So when you read the resurrection story and you can see these things, it's easy to understand why people would say, well, hey, understanding the Gospels and being able to see these things in the 14 years and the timing of these events, it really seems like it's all connected to Passover. Well, you're about to find out that in what's going to sound confusing, the answer is yes, but no. Yes, because it was. But no, because it's not there anymore. And you're saying, what is this guy talking about? Don't worry, guys. You're going to understand as we really get going. This is going to get very, very detailed. And so that's why I say this is for those that have been watching for a while. Because you guys know the story, right? We're talking about Taurus. We know that we're looking at Taurus. Taurus was the beginning. Taurus is the reason it's the first letter in the alphabet. We know it relates to in the beginning, but it also relates to another beginning. And that beginning is called the beginning of the flesh. And it's the reason why the Jews started their calendar, started their alphabet with Taurus, with the head of the ox, with the ox being the beginning. Okay, these are the things. This is what we're going to get into. We're going to go deep and deep and deep and show these connections because what happened, I think it was about two years ago. I had when when we realized these things with um, yeah, it was probably maybe even a little over two years ago, when we got this revelation and this confirmation of being right on target and connected to Taurus, and all of these things have exploded in revelation and in understanding since then. I remember probably about two years ago now, something like that, I was mentioning, why is it that people would think that we're always a month off on the calendar, right? And, and and sometimes I was with it too. And then about two and a half years ago, I said, I can't do it anymore. 
I'm going to stick with the Hebrew calendar and I'm not bouncing around on these calendars anymore. Well, now I believe I've got the understanding. I, I know that the Hebrew calendar is correct because they move with the moon, but it's where the sun is in the constellation. So they do use all three as Genesis 114 says. So, but back then, you know, we would always say if, if, if an event or a time passed that we were expecting would be the escape time, the pre-trib time, you know, trying to understand the 70 years, we, we would maybe look at the next month. So we would be willing to look at the next month because the event didn't happen on the Hebrew day. But then when that event passes on both times, well, then you've got to go back and look to the initial, right? And so I remember telling Ivan, uh, again, like probably like two years ago, that why is everybody looking at it being one month off? Why aren't they looking at it being two months off? And the reason was because in the first, in being one month off, they're looking at it when Christ was here. And what I would say is in the revelation we started to get because of Taurus, I understood that, hey, maybe what we're really missing is the fact that it's two months off. But the reality is, it is two months off. But the Lord knew that there was going to be this progression of that procession of the equinoxes and knew by the time of the end, built it into the law that in the third month. But do you know at the time of Moses, do you know what the, what the, what the first month of Nisan was? It wasn't Nisan as you know it. It was Savan as you know it. So let me get into this. And I'm going to, we're going to break this all down and we're going to go into some heavy, deep stuff and, and just keep going and going and going in there from there. All right. So let's start with Exodus. This was something I mentioned in, uh, in the post, one of the posts, I think yesterday or a couple of days ago as well, that there's something very interesting when you read the story of Exodus, because we know within the story of Exodus, okay, starts in chapter 12. You get the story of the Exodus where the Passover starts, okay? This is the first Passover, guys. And in this Passover, right, they're told to bring the sheep in, right? The sheep or the goat, very important. The sheep or the goat comes in on the 10th day, right? You guys know that? On the 10th day of the month, so four days before Passover, they bring it in. On the 14th day, they strike it, they they, they kill it, they take the blood, strike the, the posts, right? And they bake unleavened bread. And they ate the, the lamb with unleavened bread, it said, okay? And they ate it in haste with their shoes on their feet, ready to go at any time. And then what happens? It says, seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away leaven from your houses. And it goes on to tell them about leavened bread, about the week of unleavened bread, which is the week of Passover. It says, and in the first day, there shall be a holy convocation. In the seventh day, shall be a holy convocation. Remember, this is the first time they're, they're knowing about this. They're understanding that they're being shared from the Lord what they're to do. And then it says, um, in the first month, on the 14th day of the month at even, at even, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the month. Seven days, no leaven, right? So, then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, draw out and take out a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. Okay, strike it, so on and so forth. You read through it. He has Aaron there to help him out. And we see this story, the, the, the firstborns, we're going to find out. And all of this is still about Passover and unleavened bread. And you can follow the story, the firstborn, there's your unleavened bread again. They're, they they flee, right? The Lord leads them. They flee. When they flee, they get to the Jordan River. They go to cross the Red Sea. And when they cross the Red Sea, then we know all of the enemies get killed. They start crossing it as well. And we all know the story. And then the Lord is a pillar of light and is leading them. Okay? We all know this story. Then we get to chapter 19. 
<coughs> and it says, remember, the rest of it was, you know, then then they go to the well, I think in, in Miriam or, or or something like that. And and the the palm tree story, right? The the palm trees and the wells. And now they've kept going, they keep going, and then it says in chapter 19 of Exodus, in the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. Now, we know now that this third month to us is probably why they were called months, uh, in numbers, because to us, we would look at Passover as being in, in our modern day Nisan, which it is because of the movement of the sun and the moon, right? And, and of the sun. And the, the third month would be Savan. So let me just, I mean, it's very straightforward. I'm not showing you guys anything secret or mystery here, but I am going to make you realize something that maybe many of you guys didn't see before. So here they have the Passover. They make unleavened bread. They're eating it with uh, the Passover meal. And then they have seven days, but we know they had to flee here on the 15th of Nisan, the 15th day of the first month. So this is when they fled. The first child, right? The firstborn died and they were told to leave, right? And send and, 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 and a mixed multitude even went with them. And what did they do? Well, they fled for seven days with that unleavened bread. And it's probably at the time of the end of seven days when the Lord separated, when they got to the river and the waters divided. Then they crossed over. And when they crossed over, we know that's the enemy. It all closes in on the enemy after that. So from the time of the end of unleavened bread, what do we read about in the story? What do you read about? Is there anything in the month of Iyar that follows, in the rest of Nisan, in, in all of the second month called Iyar now, and in the beginning part of Savan, do you read, do we read of anything that happened in relation to a, a number count that we know of now? The only thing we were shown is the Passover, and how they were to observe it, and unleavened bread. You see? Was there, was there any three days? Was there any, and on the third day for first fruits? Was there, um, uh, 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 was there, what else? Uh, was there the 40 days? What about when the Son of Man resurrected and then it's 40 days? Where, where, where's the 40 days that would follow? Where, where's the rest of the story? You don't get anything in relation to this until the third month. The self-same day of the third month, which would mean in the month of Sivan on the 15th day. And on the 15th day, do you know what the Lord tells them? The Lord's talking to Moses. He bore them on eagle's wings, brought them over. And then he tells them to let the people know to sanctify them today and tomorrow. Let them wash their clothes and be ready the third day. For the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all people on Mount Sinai. So this is when they get to the mountain right here. This is when they get into Sinai on, into the, in the wilderness on the selfsame day, but in the third month. So it said the third month which is Savan now, on the selfsame day, which is the 15th day. And then he said, today, tomorrow, and be ready on the third day, and it's early in the morning. Isn't that interesting? Don't we know of a story that says today, tomorrow, and on the morning of the third day, which is called on the third day? See? Be ready for the third day. And what ends up happening? Be ready against the third day. Come not to your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning. Third day in the morning. Don't we have a story after the resurrection? When somebody resurrects on the third day 
right, shows up, right, on the third day in the morning, early in the morning. Do you know why this is, do you know why this has always kind of baffled me? Is because when we do the first fruits count, we, we do the first fruits count back uh, in, in the time of unleavened bread. But if we read the typology, if we read the story of Moses, that is supposed to be an example, like a like like a, a, a fractal in the storyline going forward to when Christ came, fulfilling it. Why are the why is the third day early in the morning, beginning at the feast of weeks? Do you know what happens next? They they're to gather themselves, right? And when they go to gather themselves, the Lord starts speaking all of the commandments. They hear. Everybody gathered at the mountain hears the voice of the Lord, of the Father. And they freak out and they can't take it. And they're hearing thunderings and lightnings and they're hearing God's voice. And in in Exodus 20 verse 19, it said, And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us. And we will hear, but let not God speak with us lest we die. They they can't take it, right? And so God says, all right. He says, you know what? Why don't why don't you go get Aaron and come with Aaron, okay? As he's telling them all these things. I should say before he goes to tell them with Aaron and everything, he's now giving them all these things. He's giving Moses all of these things. He's telling them all of these law things and all these things to do and how to do it. And you get to chapter 24. So got to remember, when did this happen? This was all happening on the third day. He's reading on these things of the law and these things to let them know about. And then he says, okay, he said unto Moses, come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron, uh, Nadab, this one, and the 70 elders. They go back down, right? He he's to come up, he's to bring all these people and listen to what we read. Okay, these guys, the 70 plus the four of the, or the three of them, Moses, Aaron, this one and this one. So 74 actually saw God. They saw the God of Israel. Okay, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. They also saw God and did eat and drink. And God had stone tablets that he wrote on. Right. Listen to what happens. In Exodus 24, verse 16, it says, And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. See that? So what do you got? Six to the seventh day. So then you got what? Six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, right? That six to the seventh day, this was the early in the morning. Okay, you're right in this time frame right here. Do you know what happens next? Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up in the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. Oh, hello, wait a second. We have been taught that Passover, of course, at Nisan, okay? The 15th is unleavened bread, okay? It's seven days, and either in here or over here, (coughs) right? On the third day, he resurrected. So we know he was taken into the hands of sinful men, okay? In prison, brought before Pilate, crucified put in the grave before sunset. Then this was the Sabbath, right? The 15th is the Sabbath. The 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th of every Hebrew month is the true Sabbath. And then he resurrected early in the morning. This is what we've told because he, he resurrected on the third day. And then the count, the, the understanding of the count has been, okay, well, how do we then count the Feast of Weeks? All right? And that's where we said, you know, some people would say, well, the count would begin from this one. Others would say from this one. Okay. This would be the first Sabbath, second Sabbath. 
uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So some would say the 7th of Savan or the 7th of June this year is it, but it depends on how you count, and we believe the count is from here, and that's why we're seeing it in the Exodus story. Okay, This is why we're seeing the third month the self-same day. But did you notice what isn't here? What isn't taking place during all of this time is there's no 40 days of the Son of Man. If it's a typology and, and what, re, what was represented by the Israelites and what Moses did at that time in this observance of the first Passover, why is it that we're seeing the third day over here followed by the seven days and then the 40 days and 40 nights of Moses? Have you guys ever wondered that? <clears throat> Why is the count of a three and a seven and then 40 days and 40 nights? Hello. What is that? 50? Three, seven, 40. How is it that there's suddenly this 50 day count after the Feast of Weeks? And why is this count related to the 40 days like a typology of the Son of Man? When all our life we've been told that the 40 days begins from his resurrection on the third day. That gets pretty twisted, doesn't it? It starts to make you say, well, wait a second. I mean, yeah, I mean, if this was the first Passover in Moses at the Exodus, and then we don't read anything after unleavened bread when they crossed over. So when they cross over, there's no, why, why didn't the Lord take them to somewhere uh, along the way and, and have them do a 40 days and 40 nights? Why, why didn't it happen earlier? Why did it take to the third month, 15th day, before the Lord says on the third day and then seven, and then 40 days and 40 nights. Do you understand what I'm getting at, guys? And again, this is for those who have been around for a while. The answer <laughs> and the, the purpose to this question is this right here. Okay? Oh, is it going to come up? Uh, this one right here. Is this right here? Okay? I'm showing it on this one just because I'm saving that other thing and I don't want to I don't want to forget that it's so important. So, this is why I'm bringing it up. We've revealed, we've shown, we've explained so many times here in this ministry knowing that Matthew is the 7 years of trumpets, knowing that Mark is the 7 years of seals, we know that Luke's is the 7 years that we're in but they fast passing Okay, he was so in love. He was so in love to create. He was so in love to, to get the bride ready. But Luke's portion is really focused in at this period of time, which is called above 14 years. It's a short period of time, several weeks before the 14 years actually begin. And if you guys remember me explaining this to you, when we read the Gospel of Matthew, we read the Gospel of Matthew, and we see that it's the resurrection story at the end of Matthew, but the entire conversation is way different than Mark's and then Luke's. And then we read the end of Mark's Gospel, and we see Mark's resurrection story, and it's completely different than Matthew's and Luke's. And then we get to Luke's. And Luke's actually starts with John's for the first eight days and then goes to Luke's at the eighth day and starts the 40. And so we get to this John and Luke portion and we see that that Luke one in relation to the 40 days is way different than the one from Matthew and Mark. And what I explained to you guys is that when we receive this understanding here in 1 Corinthians 15, Eight, four through eight, we saw that when Christ rose the third day, he met with the 12. These are the 12s of the tribes. And then we saw this incredible piece of wording 
that said after that, he was seen of this larger group. This larger group is the Mark group. This group right here of the 12 tribes, this 12 is the Matthew group. This group that was met after that related to the Mark group. And then he says, and after that, he met with all the apostles. This is another group of 12. What was this group? Oh, I shouldn't say 12 because it wasn't quite 12 at the time, right? He met with all the apostles. When he met with the apostles, this is the John group. And then it says, and after that, right? Or sorry, and last of all, he was seen of me also one born out of due time. This is Paul giving us the typology of the pre-trib bride of Christ, the pre-trib rapture. So what we're seeing here is he met with one group. After that, he met with another group. And after that, he met with the apostles. So you've got 12, a large number, the apostles, and then those disciples and, and the, the typology of the being taken out before the tribulation, right? Before the pain came, okay? One being born out of due time. And why this was so fascinating is because it revealed to us what we were understanding in the resurrection story of Math of Luke, Mark, and Matthew. And that was that the reason it said the body of the Lord was not found is because this was the typology at the beginning of the 40 days that as the Lord was coming, bang, the bride of Christ was being removed. That's why out of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it was the only one that said this. And then you see that he meets with the two. He eats with them. Everything's fine. We've covered all these things before. And it goes into what? It goes into Acts chapter 1 from Luke. And we see it's about the 40 days of the Son of Man. They had followed him around and been with him for 40 days. But what have we been told about this? We've been told because the story of the resurrection in Luke, Mark, and Matthew, that they're essentially the same thing, just different perspectives. We've totally missed all of these years of understanding that they're not perspectives. They're different groups of people being spoken to at different periods of time, just like it said here. And so what did this reveal? This revealed that this group of 12, and that after that, this larger group that he met with, which represent Matthew's group and Mark's group in, the, in their resurrection stories of chapter 28 of Matthew and chapter uh, uh, 16 of Mark, it represented the seven Sabbaths count. You following? It represented the seven Sabbaths from that unleavened bread, from the spring feasts. After he met with this group and this group over this period of time that was the seven Sabbaths, then the 50 days count began, which started with the apostles group of John's resurrection story. And then on the eighth day, after seven days, on the eighth day, he then meets with the Mark group. Uh, sorry, sorry, the Luke group in their resurrection story. So what was this saying? <clears throat> this, was being, this was proved out by finally understanding what Leviticus was telling us. How to understand and how to count Leviticus. Okay? And that when we got to the counting of the Sabbaths, see, from the morrow after the seventh Sabbath is complete, shall you number 50 days. This is when you count 50 days. And so <clears throat> when... When we go and we look at these things in Matthew and we look at these things in Mark and, and you're trying to line it up and you're like, this doesn't make any sense. Well, where it made sense was the revelation of the end of days. So in the is, which is what happened. So the was is Old Testament. The is is from Christ until the time of the escape. And the is to come is from the escape going forward. The is to come revealed to us that we had a seven and a seven of years, and that in the end of days, it wasn't going to be a seven weeks of Sabbaths, but it was represented as years of Sabbaths of seven and seven. 
Okay, but in the story of the is of what happened, it was seven years, seven weeks of Sabbath, right? Seven Sabbaths of the time spent with Mark, uh, with Matthew and Mark's group before he gets to the John and Luke group. This could never be understood before because the understanding of counting for the Feast of Weeks was not correct. The Feast of Weeks is seven Sabbaths, then counting 50 more days. And that's what we came to understand in this revelation of the Gospels. That this group of, of 1 Corinthians 15, 4 through 8, was that he met with this group, Mark, and uh, this group, Matthew, and this group, Mark, during those seven Sabbath weeks. And the 50 days he actually spent with the John group of apostles and with the Luke group of disciples. And in the end of days, to repeat it one more time, and in the end of days, how we came to understand what already happened was because in the end of days, it wasn't weeks being counted like this as, as, as the Feast of Weeks, but it was a typology of it in years because what is it? Seven, 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 seven. And when it's all over, it's the final jubilee. So what we came to understand is that it begins with 50 days, then you've got 14, and it ends with the 50th jubilee. And it became a revelation here in this ministry, this, this key that unlocked it all. And so we understood that there was this period of time of that 50 days before the tribulation began, that would be then 14 years, and it would end with the 50th jubilee. And so <clears throat> the reason I'm bringing this up in relation to the Exodus story is because we can clearly see in the Exodus story that after they left, the only things that were fulfilled were um, Passover and unleavened bread. And it's not until the 15th day of the third month that we then get a three days, that we then get the seven, and that we then get the 40, all back to back, equaling what? 50 days. So don't you find that interesting? That in looking at the count and having been told all of our lives that Jesus' 40 days began after his resurrection right here, according to, to the understanding of 1 Corinthians 15, no, it didn't. And according to the, the story of the original Exodus at Passover, no, it didn't. Because the 40 days didn't begin till around here. When they got to Sinai. You see what I'm saying? It skips all of this time until the 15th day of the third month and then gives three and seven and then 40 days. So we've got more evidence of this. All right. <clears throat> we have more evidence. We can understand this, this pre mid and post that we were talking about better. And what ended up happening is before I, I, I was getting and I was piecing all this together yesterday. The the it was the night before. Yeah, it must have been the night before. You know, I always go to Lord and I say, Lord, please, your will. Let me know what you want me to understand. Where do you want me to go? Because guys, I've said this so many times. I don't generally know. Very rarely do I know where I'm going to go with my next video. I just let the Lord lead, and as soon as something catches me, that's where I go. Many times, you guys share something, and it sparks something in me to go and look. And it just continues and continues and goes from there. Well, what had happened is I this wasn't part of it. We are, we've talked about this before, but I wanted to bring some clarity in it to be able to show that even the Exodus story shows that the three and then the, 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 the seventh and then 40 days doesn't happen until the month of Savan, until the third month. But what had happened is, as I was praying on these things before this, and and 
saying, Lord, how do you want me to move? What do you want me to see? What do you want me to understand? What had dawned on me was a very interesting count. And that is, we know that the month of Savan, the month of Savan is, is, the, is, the, is the beginning. Okay, well, this is what we're going to get into. It's, it's the beginning. Okay, so what dawned on me was if this is looked at, for example, if this is looked at as a Passover, this is what dawned on me. So as I had prayed and I had asked the Lord, what did he want? What did he want to show me? What do you want me to understand? I, this came to my mind. Okay, no audibles or anything like that. This just suddenly started coming into my mind. If the beginning is Taurus, which is Savan, I said, well, what if we looked at Savan as Passover? And I'm going to explain all of this as to why. I said, what if we look at Savan as Passover? Okay. And if you look at Savan as Passover, there's your Passover date. There's your uh, um, uh, 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 Sabbath, right? Uh, um, when he was crucified. Okay. It's the third day, that early in the morning time frame, right? It could be here as well. Based on when Moses got into the wilderness, right? So the other way to look at it is they got there on the 15th day. <clears throat> and the Lord said today, tomorrow, and early in the morning of the third day. It's like going to the resurrection story of Luke. And we go to the resurrection story. And I said, well, wait a second. I remember that when we counted this and where the, the 40 days of the Son of Man ended, that 31st to the 1st, somewhere in there, I think it was the 31st of, of, uh, of July, the Holy Ghost didn't show up till the 50th day on the 6th of Av, or August 3rd. But we had one, two days left before the 9th of Av. And so when you look at this, I had, I had wondered why two days, why didn't it equal to the August 5th? Because that attack that destroys them, that, that first attack that comes against them is the 9th of Av. But it could start definitely when you look at history, it could start on the 7th of Av. But it always kind of was in the back of my mind of this two days. And so I said to myself, as I was thinking these things and considering this as a Passover, I said, well, what if we considered this then as the Passover and then you did the count of the Feast of Weeks? Right? What if we consider it now Passover and then from the Sabbath after, if this is that count from the Sabbath after, there's your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This would be the Feast of Weeks from Savan as the beginning, right? As, as a Nisan type. And what happens after the seventh Sabbath? then shall you number 50 days. Do you guys remember when you number then 50 days from August 6, 2022, and you add 50 days, it goes to September 25th. What was September 25th? Well, the 9th of Av, as we've been teaching, is the first attack. 50 days later is September 25th, the 29th of Elul. What do we know about this day? This is the second attack day of the fasting in the morning of the seventh month. Okay? It goes from the 29th into the first. This is the fast of Gedalia. They observe it here, but it happened right here. So what we're seeing is, is almost like, like a Savan Passover count. Now, is it really Passover? No, it's not. It's not actually Passover. We know it's the third month now, but what do we also know? We know that Luke's story, in, in all the Gospels for that matter, we have this resurrection story. 
how is it that we have a resurrection story in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John for that matter, but in the synoptics of Luke, Mark, and Matthew, yet we know that Matthew and Mark were two sets, uh, not two sets, but they were they were the Feast of Weeks count when he met with them. You see, we've been told all our lives he just met with the apostles. We know it's not true. 1 Corinthians 15 proves that. So if we're looking at this now, as we said earlier, the 50 days begins from John, right? The Lord, it begins at 50, and then he comes back on the eighth day. On the eighth day, he meets the other apostle, right, with, uh, with Thomas, and then he goes and meets the Luke group, who are the two disciples, and the body is gone, and now you've got the two that he meets on the road to Emmaus, and he eats with them and everything else, the ones we've been calling this worker group. If you apply that John-Luke portion, which it's John and then Luke, and then it goes to Acts, you realize Matthew and Mark doesn't then connect to Acts. It goes John, Luke, Acts. These guys stand on their own because it relates to the seven Sabbaths. And in the end of days, it relates to the seven years and seven years. (coughs) So if we take just the John and the Luke count portion, and we apply it to this Savan, which is where it equaled, which is where Moses was that it equaled, and we apply it like a Passover, like Mark, uh, like Luke four, uh, uh, 24, and we use it that, sorry, as the John and the Luke in the resurrection stories, we end up getting a count that brings us to seven Sabbaths and then 50 days right at the exact spot that begins and ends the 50 days that we've been talking about. So I just, I found it was, I found it was interesting because I started to say, well, wait a second. Is there something to the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke and why each of them is talking about the resurrection? How can each of them be a resurrection story as the third day if there was only really one? See, now that he was risen first day of the week, how does this happen? (coughs) We've explained this many times because we understand the, the, the synoptic gospels and the resurrection stories. We understand the typology of prophecy built into them. But remember, there's been this question that's been going around that it really seems like, like they're all pre, mid, and post going to be connected to a Passover. And how could that be this year if Passover has already ended? Well, because we know it's not actually going to be Passover. It's going to be the third month of Savan. But do you realize that back in the beginning, Savan was the beginning? Or Taurus, which is the month of Savan, was the beginning. We've spoken about this a lot lately. To the early Hebrews, Taurus was the first constellation in the Zodiac and consequently was represented by the first letter of their alphabet. Right? Represented by the first letter of their alphabet. We've shared this many times. This is the Hebrew alphabet. 1 of you for 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? To 22. They have 22 letters in their Hebrew alphabet, like 22,000 years, or like the 22 years of the end of days, the seven easy in love, fast passing years, followed by seven of seals, seven of trumpets, and the final jubilee. Okay? So what they did, knowing that that Taurus at their beginning was the beginning, they called Aleph, which is Taurus, the beginning. Taurus, as you guys all know, is the ox, okay? For those that don't know, it's Aleph, it's the, oh, where is it? 
It's the head of the ox. All right? It's the head of the ox. What is the head of the ox? It's Taurus. That is why they called it the beginning of, uh, uh, the beginning of their constellations back then, but it's why they used it as the first letter of the alphabet because it was the head of Taurus. Now, look what it says. Taurus was the first constellation for them. Taurus was the first constellation. So I said, well, wait a second. If we go look at the Exodus at the time of the first Passover, it was about 1300 BC. So let's go look at 1300 BC and see where Passover was. Okay? This day right here, the moon has passed the sun in Taurus. Okay? Got to remember, these two right here are Taurus. So, and you also have to remember, they're not exact. These gradient lines aren't exact. But Taurus would represent this one and this one. It could be a little bit before and end a little bit before. But this is generally Taurus and this is Taurus, okay? These two right here. These two are Aries. Even though Aries is over here, Aries is so small, but this is also Aries. And this is Pisces, okay? These two represent Pisces. Sometimes it could start a little bit before for Aries and end a little bit before, and it's really the start of Taurus right here, all right? But generally, and always, not even generally, you'll always see the sun in the, its appropriate constellation at the time of the of mid month, okay? At the time of the of uh, uh, the full moon. So when you go and look at this, you take thirteen hundred. It was approximately thirteen hundred, right? There's arguments for it, and we go to April twenty seventh. Okay, there's twenty eighth. It depends on when the sun, when the moon is far enough away. You see down here. See down here how much illuminated the sun is, uh, the moon is. All right. Once it gets far enough away from the sun. So this right here would be approximately Passover time in 1300 BC, which would be April, approximately April 27th, according to. Um, according to uh, 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 the constellations, all right? Well, check this out. We go to Roman year 1300 BC. In 1300 BC, we get to Nisan, the first month of the year. We get to Passover and unleavened bread. And it's what? I showed 27th. You know, they've got it as 28th going to the 29th of April, okay? May 1st, this is where May starts. So this is the 28th of April is where it starts. What did we show? About 27th of April is where Passover was. Wait, did you hear that? This is Nisan. This is the month of Nisan. In April, for just about the whole month of April, so, where do you get Nisan? From about the 15th of April? Passover, about the 27th, 28th, is the equivalent? What did it say? Nisan. This is Passover. I want, I, wanted you to, I want you to understand, this is Passover. What does this show as Passover is? On that date in 1300 B.C.? Taurus. Taurus. So it's just like the, the article was saying, in the beginning for the Jews, it was in Taurus. You understand what I'm getting at? <clears throat> now here's the thing. When you, when you begin to understand this, and you remember, and Ivan would remember this when, when we were saying, so does it mean everything is two months off? No. Because there was the progression of the equinoxes. There was that progression or procession, whatever they call, for the sun and how things have sped up. So the Lord already knew that the third month, that the month of Savan, was still his beginning because it's when the sun is in Taurus. Now, you understand something? This period of time 
in relation to in the beginning is the flesh. All right? You guys know what I'm getting at? We we talk about how we we talk about how it's Matthew is the flesh, right? We've talked about this, we're going to get into it. That Matthew is the creation of Adam and Eve. It's the flesh portion. Okay? That Mark's group of creation were those corrupted by the light. So the flesh was corrupted by Satan. And when is Satan going to show up? In the 11th year of tribulation, which is mid-trumpets. Mark's group was the first creation in days, and they got corrupted by the false light. Okay? They were light-created beings, and they got corrupted by the false light. That's what's going to happen. Who's going to show up? The Antichrist during the time of seals. And Luke's group was the creation of the Spirit. Is Genesis 1 verse 1 and 2. That's all you get. It's called the gap creation theory. And many would say it's millions or billions of years, but it's not true. It was 7,000 years is the revelation. But you only get two verses because just like Luke, you're not told a whole bunch about anything being connected to tribulation. The only thing we get is his discourse in this connection of understanding that it's above 14 years. So it's this short period of time of 50 or so days, or the two sets of 50, that is above the 14 years beginning. So that's why you don't get a lot of detail of those 7,000 years. They, they was, it was the spirit realm. And he was so excited like Jacob to work that it was just this short little blip that's spoken about in Genesis verse one, uh, Genesis 1, verse 1 and 2. But the Mark portion is the flesh. Uh, sorry, the Matthew portion is the flesh, the Mark portion is the light, and the Luke portion is the spirit. And so what we're seeing in this connection, I think it was right here I want to show, what we're seeing is we are now living in what? Well, we're not living in the spirit realm. Because after Christ created in the beginning, see, in the beginning, what happened in the beginning? Aleph, Taurus, one, the beginning. So in the beginning, in Aleph, in the beginning, Christ as the ox, which was the beginning, he created the spirit realm. In verse three, we're told God said, uh, uh, God said, let there be light. And we know that Christ was that light. And we know it because of John. We know that he was the in the beginning was the word, and the word was made light. And so in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, he's made light. And it's this portion that he creates in the males and the females now. All right? That's this portion that he creates. And when he creates this portion, there's these false light, right? Lucifer, one of the cherub that fell and corrupted that light. And this is where I was saying that when we go into this, we're going we're gonna to touch on that stuff that, that Kleck would show, but we're going to shine more understanding on it. And that was that light portion. This is that piece that we've spoken about many times where we say uh, 2 Peter 3, 8, right? Days are as thousands, and thousands are as days. So to the Lord, all of this was seven days, seven days, seven days. If we saw it in the perspective of time as humans, it would have been 7,000, 7,000, 7,000. Why did it say days as thousands? Because in the beginning, that, that creation of light over the seven days to the Lord was seven days. But to man would be a 7,000. And then since Adam is in the creation of flesh, we are living in those 7,000 as years, but to the Lord, there are days. That's the answer. That's the riddle from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. So where are we living right now? We are living in the time of flesh. So there are people in the spirit living in the time of flesh. There are people of the light living in the time of flesh. And of course, everybody's in flesh 
which is Matthew, Judah's period of time. Remember when it's all over, what were they promised? What were the Jews promised? They were promised their millennial reign in the flesh. It was their promise because this is their portion of 7,000 years. But Christ's portion of light that he made, they needed to be saved. Remember what he said? He said, um, is it this one? He said, uh, da, 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 da. no, that's the first shall be last, right? He said that he came, right? I am sent, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The house of Israel is represented as Mark's group. It is the world. It is the house of Israel that mixed with all the world and the Gentiles. And they were corrupted by the false light. And so he came to save them. Yes, we're all saved by that saving, but the focus was the lost. Those who are already in the spirit, they're being removed at the beginning. They don't need to be saved. They are already saved when the end begins. That's why they're gone first. It's this group that then needs to be saved who are that group all the way back from the creation of the males and females. And I'm gonna, we're going to keep going deeper into this. But <clears throat> right now, we're living in the 7,000 years of thousands, right? The 7,000 years of the creation of Adam in the flesh. And all three groups are still in it. So when we read that, it was the Hebrews that in the beginning, okay, the first constellation was Taurus. This is talking about from Adam. This is talking about the portion of flesh. So when we go to the Exodus, which is that first early portion, okay, when we go to the Exodus, we'll get to that in a moment. <coughs> we see that it was in Taurus. This is why they called it the beginning. Are you, are you starting to grasp a little bit about what I'm showing here? Taurus is no longer the beginning. Taurus is Savan. The current present day in the month of Savan is when the sun is in Taurus. You following? So that's why they called it the beginning. Do you know when Christ came at the time of his death and resurrection, do you know that Passover, watch this. Okay. That Christ at the time, where is it? Where is it? Okay. What is this? These two represent Pisces, right? This is Pisces. And we go to Aries, because we're, we're in February. We're following the moon. Okay, watch this. See? Where are we? Look at where we are. When Christ was here, it was what? It was Aries. It was Aries. Watch this. If we go to this chart again, look at this one for 33 AD. In 33 AD, Nisan on the 14th, right? The 14th of Nisan for Passover being April 3rd of 33 AD. Okay? April, we got to go to the full moon. April 3rd of 33 AD. Where was I? For the count. Oh, wait. We had to account for zero. Okay. So what ends up happening is you find out that in 33 AD, it was in Aries. Okay. Because when Christ came, Aries is the sign of the Lamb of God in the heavens. 
So at the time Christ came, it was perfectly planned that when he came, the beginning of the year of Nisan would be in Aries. And do you know that that would now be what everybody calls one month off? Because when Christ was here, Passover time, Nisan was Aries. So what do we have so far? We have at the first Passover, it was in Taurus, which is now Savan, two months later. We have the time when Christ came the first time, and it was in Aries, which is now the second month of Ayar. And when you go to 2022, we see that it was in Pisces. Okay? We see it was in Pisces, and we all know this, that it's in Pisces, but let's go to 2022, and we see April 15th at the time of Passover, and where is it? Remember what I said? It could be a little bit earlier. And where do we see? It's in Pisces. So we had Taurus, Aries, and Pisces. There's three months. Do you understand that difference? There's three months. What was Pisces? Pisces equals fish. Christ is also referenced as fish, is he not? But when he came, he was the Lamb of God, the representation of Aries at the time of Passover. But it still wasn't the beginning because the beginning was Taurus. So what do we have? Do we not have Luke, Mark, and Matthew? Do we not have Spirit, Son, and Father? Do we not have pre, mid, and post? And so when we look at this connection, and we've been, we've been saying that this connection with Luke is revealed to us as being in Taurus, the reason it's in Taurus is because the beginning, everything in threes, the beginning in the portion of flesh was Taurus. And in our day and age, it is now the third month. But to the Lord God, when Adam was created, when, when, when the Passover was instituted later, it was in Taurus. So our typology of seeing a Passover story in Luke and trying to connect it and say, well, it, it's got to be a Passover story. It was. Do you understand what I'm telling you? It was a Passover story. But in the understanding and knowing that there was a progression of the equinoxes, by the time it came to the time of the end, the Lord had already prepared it with Savan. The Lord had already prepared it as the third month. <clears throat> Do you understand? Back in, in Moses' days, it was the first month, second month, third month. It doesn't change anything except to the Lord God who never changes. The beginning is Taurus. So it was a Passover. But it's no longer a Passover for the bride, for the pre-trib. It's connected to Savan in the third month, which is still Taurus as the first month was at Passover to Moses. Okay? He had already planted out that when it got here, the connection would be the first fruits of the wheat. 
It would be the first fruits of the wheat harvest. And the 40 days are connected after it, not before it. Do you understand that when Christ came, the connection to Aries and, and being the Lamb of God, how perfect it was? We're going to get into that. I'm going to show you how Mark's group and when Christ came, came for Mark's group, came, as he told us, for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which we know and have taught is represented as Mark's group, which is the world, which is the, the creature group. You're going to see why he did it at the time of Aries. And you're going to understand why now it's in the fish. Because don't we know something else that hasn't been fulfilled yet? In a fish? <laughs> mind-blowing, brothers and sisters. Absolutely mind-blowing. It's going to freak you out. So, remember, we were told the first will be last and the last will be first. Okay? We know that Matthew, Mark, and Luke... We've revealed that the understanding is Luke, Mark, and Matthew in the end of days. Okay? Now, what, what is this connection to it? Well, we know that the beginning is the end, and the end is in the beginning. So, if the end is the last being first, and it started with Matthew, and then Mark, and then Luke, because we're in what? We're in Matthew's portion, right? We're in the Adam flesh portion, which was last, okay? And we're living in their portion. And then there's Mark, the middle one, and then there's Luke. So they were the first in the flesh. They're the second, right? The light portion and the third. Well, when, if we go back to the beginning and the end has to be a reflection of the beginning, then that means in the beginning, the end will start with Luke's group. The middle group never changes. It'll be Mark. And those who were first in the New Testament here becomes the last. And that's why you get Luke, Mark, and Matthew. And that's why the scriptures told us the last shall be first and the, the last shall be first and the first will be last. So now when we go to this creation story and we see this conversation that we've talked about a fair bit over the last few months. It's such a mind-blowing story to understand as we were showing or as we were talking about earlier, right? This, this understanding of in the beginning, that verse one and two, we see it's the spirit of God that moved over the face of the waters, okay? It was this first creation. It was in the beginning. This word means Christ, first fruits. So in Christ, God created, okay? In Christ, the Father created the heaven and the earth. Christ, as God the Son, created everything. His Father gave it to him to create. And just like the story of Jacob, those first seven years represented as 7,000, if we were looking through mind's eye of time, to the Lord, we're still seven days, but we don't get any talk about it. The only conversation we get is these two verses. Because just like uh, 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 um, Jacob, who was so exciting that the time flew by like days, he was excited to create. He was excited to work to get his bride. Christ, in this case, was excited to create. He was excited to get it all started and get it going. And it started with the spirit realm. And you see, it began with the spirit of God after Christ. We know that the spirit of God, right? We know that it was this movement through the spirit of God that was then made light. So he started off as being the beginning, the word. And it was the spirit, those in the spirit of God that were created. You can say that angelic realm. And then Christ was made light. And when he was made light, the days began. All right? 
the day count began. I think I'm going to close this now. I think you guys get, well, no, I'm not going to close it yet. <laughs> it's really working hard in the background. But so we see that it started with the word and the spirit realm was made and it was the spirit of God over it. Okay. The angelic realm that was made. Then it was light. And in this creation of light, we know it was the days that were created. When you go to chapter two of Genesis, we see then that after he rested the seventh day, which would be like 7,000 to us, right? Days to the Lord, 7,000 in, in the flesh realm, in the time, in the, in the, in the uh, existence of time. Then the Lord God created man, formed him out of the dust of the earth. This is the time of the flesh that we're living in right now, and it's the 7,000. You realize, for those that are new, that there are two separate sets of time, seven days as 7,000 years, and 7,000 years we're in as seven days to the Lord. And there's this mysterious part at the beginning. Well, when we took this to John chapter 1, John already told us. John said, in the beginning was the word. And that the word was made light. Okay? That he was made light. And that John was a witness of the word. Uh, was witness to the coming of the light. And we shared how being a witness to the light meant that those who were part of the spirit of God were witnesses and will be witnesses to Christ coming for the 40 days to bring light to the earth. It's going to replay, remember? It's going to replay in this fractal. And we showed this even with this, um, this chapters to years. We showed this with the Gospel of John. When chapter 7 ends and the bride is gone, chapter 8, what do we see in John chapter 8? We go to John chapter 8. We see the typology of the Gentile bride standing before him, right? He's bent over and nobody's left but her standing before him. And when it's over, look what happens. He says, I am the light of the world. Okay? Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Right on time. The beginning of tribulation, which is a representation of when he comes for 40 days. When you go to Genesis 1, when does that period of time start? In verse 3, he's made light. When he's made light, the confusion that has come in this, this thing with, with, um, with, uh, uh, with Kleck and the way that I had understood it, many had in the past as well, is that when you see these males and females, let us make man in our image, the idea is you read this about the in our image, in our likeness, and you see God, and you say, see, it's the lowercase gods, even though one could see, could be uppercase, the God of the little g gods. You realize that is not the fallen angels, that we are not, the, the, the world is not fallen angels. This was Christ with those other angels of light. His cherubim that were with him. And they created, and, and he created these males and females because don't forget who these guys were. They were builders with them. They were builders. Remember that? We can go to Psalms 118 and see that Christ was, see? Psalms 118, verse 22. The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. This is the beginning of tribulation. This is like the escape of the bride time referenced as Psalms 118 and him now being here for 40 days. He's coming back. He's going to be that headstone of the corner. He's that stone's throw. But you see, the builders that refused him. He was a part of it. Okay? He was a part of it. Of course he was. Fallen angels couldn't make light beings. 
It was Christ who was made light. And he was the first light creation over everything. And in this creation, there were builders with him who were helping to make all of these things. And then it was Christ who is saying, let us make man in our image. And they made them male and female. Sorry, Mike, I'm doing the video. <laughs> Texts are coming through. And he's making them male and female after their image. What was their image? Their image was light. You see, Christ, there is no way that the Lord made them fallen angels. But you understand where this thinking comes from because they only understand a perspective of seven years. It goes back to what I share and talk about all the time. I'm a broken record on these things. When you only understand seven years and everything is because of Matthew, when all of your foundation is Matthew, when everything you have understood comes from the gospel of Matthew as your foundation, whether you know it or not, it forces you to only see seven years of tribulation and seven years of all creation. And you're unaware that this separate creation <coughs> had nothing to do with Adam and Eve and that it was actually a separate 7,000 year creation portion, which is also seven days to the Lord. But when these guys were created, when this light portion that the Lord created with them, they weren't corrupted yet. They were light beings. The Lord wouldn't have made, made a group of males and females of, 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 of fallen angels. It was these other little G gods, the little G ones. Okay? Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is the uppercase G, lowercase O-D God of the little G gods. Father God is all uppercase L-O-R-D, God. Okay? We know this by Psalms 110. Okay? When you understand these differences of who the Gospels are speaking to, when you understand these differences of the portions of time and who they are, you'll understand that Psalms 110 says, when, when it's David saying, look, the Lord, this is the Father, all uppercase, said unto my Lord, this is Jesus. So David is saying, this is his Lord, speaking to, from his Lord, the Father. So the Father is telling the Son, sit at my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. How much more clear does that get? This is what Jesus was referencing in every gospel. How is it you say that I am David's son, that the Messiah is David's son, when David himself said, the Lord said unto my Lord, calling his Lord, David's Lord, who's the Messiah? How can I be his son? So what do you have? This is the father. This is the son. So when we're looking at Genesis chapter 1, and you're seeing this, these beings, the, the, the God and the gods who are involved in making these males and females, this creation in the light realm, they weren't fallen angels. It's absolutely impossible that there was fallen angels. What happened after this creation is those cherubim of light, the, the head cherubim that fell who was Lucifer, as we all know, <coughs> was the false corrupted light that we read about in Ezekiel 28. He was the cherub. He was the brightest cherub that surrounded. He was the anointed cherub. This is Lucifer. He was the brightness, the most beautiful. He was one of them there with others in that realm of light, in that creation of light. And it was them that corrupted <coughs> this creation of the males and females in light. 
they were corrupted by these by these little g gods because of these little g gods they ended up refusing the the uppercase g god which is christ this is these are the builders the little g gods are the builders that refused christ that refused the cornerstone and these guys got corrupted well, who was in charge? Who was over making this group? Christ was. And this group fell. They didn't know any different. It was the builders, the little G gods who were there with Christ, who then refused and rejected Christ and took over and corrupted these, this creation. This is exactly what we read in Romans chapter 1. Okay? This is for more than you people. In Romans chapter 1, starting in verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain. These are those little g gods. In their imaginations and in their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Listen to this. This is so important. And changed the glory of the incorruptible God. <coughs> so, so that image that was created of light of those males and females, these guys changed it. These fallen angels, these, these false light ones that were there with them, that refused them and rejected the cornerstone, they changed the glory of the un uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible men. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, dishonoring their dishonor to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Verse 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. So what happened? <clears throat> It's saying that these little G gods who refused Christ after they helped build everything, refused and rejected them after this creation of these males and females in their image was made. Christ gets booted out, if you will, and these guys get corrupted. The image of God, the creator who created them, these little G gods, turned from worshiping the creator and went and started going after and corrupting these males and these females. So you see, when you understand it only in a seven-year thing, you, you've got you've to figure out how it all fits and mash it together. And many parts of it sounds good until you get the revelation of the three groups and the three periods of time and, and the three sevens you can now separate it all and see them all clearly in their periods of time. And so you realize <coughs> these were not fallen. It was not the fallen angels that made these guys. It was Jesus, the uppercase G God, over the little G God. And then he got, he got rejected by these builders, little G gods that were with them, and the little g-gods, instead of worshiping Christ the Creator, they turned to the creature and started worshiping the creature more than the Creator. That's precisely what Romans was telling us. You see how fascinating this stuff is? <coughs> now let me show you something so crazy, it's going to freak you out. I'm so happy that Ivan did this for us. When this all started coming together several months ago, I even put this together for me. And what we see, remember, there's the Luke group, the Mark group, and the Matthew group. This is like that other chart. Seven easy years, like Jacob said, you see? And then you get the escape. Then you've got your seven years of seals. And then you have your seven years of trumpets. But it's a fractal of the creation story. And even though in Genesis 1, verse 1 and 2, we don't get much. 
except that it was the Spirit of God that moved over many waters. This is a big deal because we know that those who have the Spirit of God are the sons of God according to Romans 8. Okay? So there were those created in the spirit realm. See, they're all spirit. We're dwelling in the flesh, but they're spirit. It's the first group. Okay? And those who are in the first group, they have what? They're led by the spirit of God. They are the sons of God. So this is the group that didn't fall. Okay? Those who have the spirit of God in them are the ones who never fell from that first group. They didn't fall like those other guys that became light and those little G gods that rejected Christ and then corrupted the light group that was made in that second portion of creation. This first group remained in that typology. So what are we seeing in that typology? Luke, the bride of Christ, what are they called? They're called the ones who have the spirit of God. They're the brides of Christ. They're the ones who have the spirit of God and they're going to be, according to Romans, co-heirs with Christ. You see? They're the co-heirs with Christ. And then you get this really interesting piece because it says, you know, this is why we suffer these things, first of all, right? We have to suffer these things in these in this life to realize how awesome Christ was, that it was only him that could come and correct it and repair it for everybody who came to him. None of us living in this could. He's the only one that was able to do it perfectly. And so we're suffering in this life, trying to, to be like him to the best of our ability and to keep from sin so that we could be glorified together with them. These are the ones who are the spirit of God in them. But then listen to what it says in verse 19 of Romans 8. For the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. We did a study that this creature is related to the Mark portion of Gospels only and is the creature creation in Genesis 1 of the males and females. So what's it saying? It's saying there's going to be this manifestation of the sons of God. Okay? They have this earnest expectation of the creature, of the Mark group, the, the, the Antichrist that's, that's coming is waiting for the manifestation, is waiting for this revelation of the bride of Christ, of the sons of God to be removed so that this creature, so that this false light antichrist can begin his, his subjecting again, if you will, to that group again. He's trying to destroy the antichrist is trying to destroy the group that Christ created here of males and females in light. It's the same typology as we've been showing. So from Genesis 3 to uh, Genesis 1 verse 3 to Genesis 2 verse 3 is the creation of days. Day 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay? The initial one, we don't see 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7. We just see two verses. And it's kind of like we said, that, that he was so excited, it just flew by. But what we do get is two verses, which is almost like what we said, how we show it's like the portion above the 14 years, a short period of time before the 14 years begins, which would be like two verses, okay? But what happens now? Here we are in the creation of days. They help them build everything, and then they create these males and females on the sixth day they're created. Christ is rejected, and these guys get corrupted. They get corrupted by what? The false light. The false light is the cherub we saw, right? So they're corrupted by the false light, who is the cherub, who is the representation of the Antichrist. That's why it's anti-Christ. Okay? The false light coming to destroy as many as he can before this period of time, the final seven years of the world, of, 
of the, the, the house of Israel can come in. This, this is the end of it. And what do we see happens? When Christ came after 6,000 years from their creation, right? Day is as a thousand, okay? Day is a thousand. So the sixth day is 6,000. The seventh day of rest was the 7,000th. Then at the time of Adam, you have one, two, three, four, and Christ came at the 4,000th year. So from the creation of the first group that he made, 6,000 years later, approximately, he came and died on the cross to save them. Did he do it to save this group? No, because this group, we're told, was always predestined. They were predestined to have the Spirit of God and to be the sons and daughters of God. This group that he created in light was the one that was corrupted that he had to come and save. So remember, in the thousands that we're living in right now, it's the portion of the flesh, which is to Judah. It's Matthew's portion. And when he came, do you notice how he didn't say he came to save the house of Judah? He didn't say he came to save the lost sheep of the house of Judah. He said he came to save the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which is Mark's group, which is the world, the Gentiles grafted in. And then we get Adam and Eve that are created, or Adam that's created, and then Eve. And it begins the portion of the flesh that we're in right now. And what happened in the, in the midst of flesh? Who corrupted it? Bam, Satan comes. Satan comes into the flesh and corrupts Adam and Eve. Satan, as we know, was not a cherub. Satan was, in Isaiah chapter 6, he was a seraphim. Okay? Above it stood the seraphim. So above the throne is where the seraphim stood. And the seraphim are what? Fiery serpents. They're serpents. What is the serpent? Well, we know the serpent in the end of days is Satan from Revelation 12. So we have this serpent, Satan, who corrupted the second group. The first one, false light, cherub, antichrist. Second one, in the flesh, Satan corrupting the Matthew group, the, the Jews group. That's why everything we learn and everything we look at comes from the 7,000-year perspective of Judah because we're all being taught by Matthew. And so in the end of days, not only do we see only 7,000 years, we only see seven years for the end of days. <coughs> so what else do we know? Well, we know from the creation of Adam, Christ is returning about 6,000 years later. And when he returns about 6,000 years later, what do we know is going to happen? Christ is going to die again. We know that Christ is the Joshua type, as we've taught recently, that he is one of the two witnesses. That he's going to be cut off at about mid-trumpets. And we know at the end of the sixth year of trumpets, he is one of the two witnesses who's killed. And when he's one of the two witnesses that killed, we know it's three days and a half. And then... They go up, to, they, they're raised up, go to heaven, and then boom, the Lord's coming down, full glory and power comes feet down on the Mount of Olives. Why? Because he has to save Matthew's group. Remember, he didn't save the Jews. He came to save the house of Israel. So he still has to save the house of Judah because they fell too. They went whoring after Israel did. So they still have to be saved. And there's a whole story. We've broken this down in many, many different ways. <coughs> but look at the time. 6,000 years later. What was this one? 6,000 years later. So when he does it again, remember, the Jews were blinded. It goes on. In fact, in this portion where it talks about Seraphim, who we know is Satan, and Satan is the portion over Matthew, if you go a little bit further, look at what we read. Who will go for us? And this is the typology of Christ, right? Then said I, here am I, send me. So he's to be sent and to go. 
And he says, look, he's told, he said, go and tell this people, uh, and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and be conserved, be converted and healed. <coughs> You understand they could not be converted and healed. Otherwise, there would have been no saving this group. So the group that talks about the seraphim, the time of Satan when he's cast down, which is the Matthew group, we know they were blinded. Their hearts were made fat, their ears plugged, their eyes made so they couldn't see, just like Jesus said in Luke chapter 19. Which means if they've been blinded, They have no shot of being saved, do they? So he must save them too. And this is what he agreed to do. Well, guess what? There's a reason I'm showing you all this and and breaking this all down. And it's so fantastic. It's all fractals. And that's what this line here, this line here is the last representation here of the 21 years from the big picture 21,000. It's the final 21 before the final thousandth year or the 21,000th year and then eternity. But there's a reason why I'm showing you all of this <clears throat> because he still has to save this group, right? They, they've been saved. He already died on the cross for them. But during the portion of seals, after the pre-trib escape with this group gone, seals is for the waking up of the church that wasn't ready and watching. So what do we what do we hear? He's coming to shine his light when he comes for 40 days as the son of man. He's bringing light to the world. All who come to me will not be in darkness but will have the light. He's waking up this group. And he's doing it for 40 days. Do you understand? This is something we've taught on many times. That the story of Jonah, we're told in the story of Jonah in Luke, that he said he would be as Jonah was. That Jonah was the sign unto the Ninevites. What? How was Jonah a sign unto the Ninevites? He went there and he was warning and declaring for 40 days. What do we know is going to happen at the beginning of the 14 years? Right before, at the escape of the bride, the Son of Man is going to be here for 40 days, warning as Jonah did. Why? Because this did not happen. It was prophecy. It was prophecy. When does he start it, guys? In the beginning. Taurus. He starts it in Taurus after the escape of the bride in Taurus. What is this period of time? It's right here. When his 40 days and 40 nights begin, the bride is gone. His body is gone. And the 40 days and 40 nights begin. And it begins in Taurus. Because Taurus is what? Because Taurus is the beginning. But do you realize that when Christ came, when Christ came, he was, of course, the Lamb of Aries. The beginning was Taurus. But when Christ came, when he came to save them, see, this beginning time was in Taurus. And when he came to save them, he was the lamb in Aries at the cross. For who? For the Taurus guys? No. For the Aries guys. For his group that got corrupted by those False lights by those angels that fell. They didn't make them. They were making everything with Christ. And Christ made them male and female in their image of light. 
then re they rejected Christ, of course, and this group was corrupted in the creation. It is still his group. It is represented by the world, <clears throat> by the lost of the house of Israel. So when Christ came on the cross, he didn't come to save this group, and he didn't come to save Mark. He didn't come to save Luke or Matthew. These guys were already predestined to be saved. And this was Judah for a future time. He came but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And when he came, he didn't come in Taurus. Taurus was already the beginning. He didn't need to come for Taurus. He needed to come for his creation of light. And when he came for that creation of light, he came into the flesh. You see, what was the first one? Spirit. What was this group? Light. What was this group? Flesh. Christ is called the last Adam or the second Adam. The first one was the first one in flesh. Given a, a, made a living soul in the flesh. Christ had to come into the flesh, but from heaven, a spirit. And when he came, he was the only one that could do what he did. And he did it in Aries to save the second group. But you realize we're not in Aries anymore. We're in Matthew's period of time of the end of days. We're living in Matthew's portion of flesh. And in this end portion of time, we're living in Pisces the fish. You want to see how awesome this gets? Check this out. Remember? Aries. The debate was is it that we're, is, are we a month off, right? That's always been a debate. And we know there's this resurrection. Remember, this is all about the resurrections. The resurrection story of whom Jesus came for was who? Mark's group. He came to save the Mark group. And when he came to save the Mark group, his death and resurrection in that period of time was in Aries. Watch this. When it was in Aries, you see, as we showed earlier, he came but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And check this out. I don't know if you guys can handle this. This is going to be so awesome. <clears throat> what do we know about the end of days? Okay. We know that it's six years of seals. Okay. We know it's going to be six years of seals for the Mark group. And then it's the seventh Shemitah, okay? The seventh year of rest. This is why we're so excited now because we know that when this seven ends at the end of September and Tishri 1 begins this year at the very end of September, it's a new set of sevens. And there's two left to the final Jubilee. And it's literally the count on the Hebrew calendar. The new one starts at Tishri 1 this year, a new set of seven-year cycle. That will be six years of seals. And what do we know? What do we know about the seventh year? Well, we know at the end of the sixth year, we see the Lord coming. This is the Lord coming on heavenly Mount Zion. Everybody's freaking out. They're hiding in the mountain saying rocks fall on us. Hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, right? For the great day of his wrath has come. So here's the end of the sixth seal, the end of the sixth year. And you go to chapter seven. Get ready for this. We've shared it many times. Now we've got even more clarity. It's going to blow your mind. Now we've got after the six years, this is now the beginning of the seventh year of seals. Okay. And we see that the 144,000 are sealed first. They help the group that was working during the seven years of seal, or the six years of seals, that Mark worker group. These 144,000 are going to start by helping bring in this great 
multitude rapture. When this great multitude rapture is brought in, that we have been showing in recent videos. Remember this video about Passovers in the is to come? We're going to bring even more clarity to it today. What you find out is just as we've said in the past, we know this is approximately six months. And if we go from a Tishri to Tishri, <coughs> excuse me, if we go from Tishri to Tishri, which is the fall to the fall, which is where it counts from, then that means the end of six years will be at Tishri. And six months later would be Passover. But guess what? Six months later would be Passover at Pisces. It would be Passover at Pisces. Guess what? Passover at Pisces. But when Christ came to save them, he came to save them in Aries. Remember I said there were three? If the pre-Luke's group is connected to Taurus, which it is, and the mid-group of the creation of days, males and females, that he came to save, he saved, and the second group was Aries, uh, uh, was Aries which is the, now the second month, when he comes the third time at the end of this period to save Judah, he's going to do it in Pisces. Are you ready to have your minds blown? We have understood this for a little while now. This is the seventh year. From chapter 7, verse 1 of Revelation is the beginning of the seventh year of seals. It is after the sixth seal, and it's what? Before the seventh seal. What have we been teaching on in this ministry for probably over three years? This word, about half an hour, is not to be confused with the soon of Psalms 90 and 10. The soon of Psalms 90 and 10 is. Um, mid trumpets. This is about the middle of the seventh year of seals. Okay? It says that the seventh seal was silence in heaven and it's about half an hour long, which we have revealed here for many years means about six months. Because we know. The six seals are a period of six years. Okay? They're going to play out over a portion of six years during the seals. When the six years are done at the end of the sixth seal, they see the Lord coming on heavenly Mount Zion. Everybody's freaking out. The seventh year begins with the sealing of the 144 and then the bringing in of the great multitude. We've shown that the bringing in of this great multitude is connected to Passover. We know it. It's a fact. It's connected to Passover. And when you get to the end of that, about six months, well, about six months doesn't mean six months, remember? Because if it goes from Tishri to Passover, <laughs> that would be six months. But this doesn't say it is six months. It doesn't say it is half an hour. It says about half an hour, about six months. We've been teaching here for over three years easy that this about means that the seventh seal in the seventh year is going to last between either five months or seven months. It will be approximately five months that the seventh seal will last, or it will be approximately seven months that the seventh seal will last. And I said this years ago that I believe that the seventh seal portion is going to be about five months, which means 
the first half of the sealing of the 144 and the bringing in of the great multitude rapture will be about seven months long. You know why that's so fascinating? Because the first group called In the Beginning, which In the Beginning was Taurus, represented by Taurus, is represented by the first Passover, which was in Taurus, but now is the third month at the Feast of Weeks, where the bride is taken of the first fruits of the wheat harvest. And that when Christ created this group, related to the end of days, marked to the world, to the sleeping church, the house of Israel, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, when he came to save that group, that group isn't Taurus. That group is connected to when he came to save them, which was Aries. He was called the Lamb, as we said earlier, because he was in Aries. The Passover was moved forward a month over those 2,000 years, approximately. And when he came, the beginning of the year, Nisan, the first month of the year, was now in Aries. And he was the Lamb of God slain for the world, right? So God knew when it came, when he came, that he was going to fulfill that portion of Aries because it would be connected to the constellation where the sun would be now at the start of the year. Well, guess what? If this was the beginning and it was the first group, and that beginning is the same as this beginning where Passover was, was and I, in our day and age, it's now Savan, the third month, and when he came and he created this group, and when he came and saved them, it was now moved to Aries, and he came and fulfilled for Aries. Don't you think when he rescues the group that he came to save, when he rescues, when he raptures the great multitude that were the lost sheep that he came to save and warned for 40 days like Jonah, don't you think that they would also be rescued as he came to rescue them? In Aries? Check this out. Do you realize that in 2029, in the spring of 2029, Aries, okay, watch this. Let's go to Passover. Passover time of 2029 is the end of March. The end of March, watch this. The end of March, wait a second. That would be Pisces. Do you know what Pisces would equal though? It would only be six months. What do we know has not yet been fulfilled in the end time revelation of everything that's been understood so far? Do you know what hasn't been understood? Watch this. Are you ready? Second Passover. Brothers and sisters, second Passover, you see here? At the time of the full moon, okay? At the time of the full moon, in 2029, in 2029, at the time of the full moon, second Passover is where? IR. It's one month off, right? It's IR. When Christ was here and he saved this group of people, he came and died for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He came when it was Aries. And in the seventh year of seals, when the great multitude comes in and Christ saves them in the great multitude rapture, 
We knew it was about six months, and I thought it was connected to the first rapture. But the first rapture, I mean, the first Passover, if it was connected to the first Passover, it would be in Pisces. But we know it's not going to be six months later. <coughs> that it would be about six months later. And we've known it for years. That the portion on the rapture side would be seven months. And that on the seventh seal side would be about five months. Well, if you do seven months from the, t the beginning at Tishri, from the time of Tishri, the second Passover, brothers and sisters, in 2029 is seven months later. In the month of Ayar, which is now in our day and age, the time of Aries. You want me to prove it to you besides this? Watch this. This is so awesome. Not only is it something we've known for years, but I'm going to show it to you with scripture in another place that we've taught it from. When we were teaching that the seventh seal was about five months, was, was like that five month side of the about six months and the, that half an hour, and that the seventh chapter of Revelation was the about seven months. We've been talking about it for years. It just never dawned on me that their connection was the second Passover until it dawned on me just in the last 36 hours or so that just like everything was threes, so is the Taurus, Aries, and Pisces. Seven months later. Look at this. In Ezekiel chapter 39. Remember what we said about Ezekiel 39? We've done some incredible teachings on this recently. Ezekiel 39 is the end of the time of the sixth year of seals. We've shown it here. We've shown it in our chart. See, Ezekiel has a chapters to years, and it's the sixth year of seals. That's the equivalent time of where it lands. Well, watch this. We've shown that this thing that people skip over because they can't understand it is how are they going to burn weapons for seven years after this Ezekiel 39 war? Well, we know how. There's one year of seals left. That's one year of burning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So at the end of the six years of trumpets, what's passed? One of seals, six of trumpets, is seven years of burning weapons. They were told that they're going to turn their weapons into, into pruning hooks and so forth, right? But seven years later, we read another piece of scripture that says they're going to turn their pruning hooks back into spears. Why? Because this was the Lord's first battle. This is going to be the Lord's final battle. That's why they were only burning weapons for seven years. <clears throat> now, knowing that this is the end of the sixth year of seals being spoken of here in Ezekiel 39 that we've talked about many times, let me show you something else that we spoke about many years ago that comes after the sixth year of seals. Listen to this. And there... They shall bury Gog and Magog and his multitude, and they shall call it the Valley of Hamagog. And seven months shall the house of Israel be burying them that they may cleanse the land. Hello. At the end of six years of seals, the Gog-Magog battle of the first sword, the first battle at the end of the sixth year of seals, comes to an end, plow uh, uh, swords into plowshares and pruning hooks, and seven months. Guys, do you realize, do you remember what happens? Do you remember 
it was Numbers, let me go look. Uh, it was Numbers chapter 9 when the second Passover was instituted. Okay? Why was the second Passover instituted? Because it said in Numbers chapter 10, uh, chapter 9, sorry, starting in verse 10, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, because they, they went to plea, right? Some people said, well, we, we'd been near a dead body. We traveled from far distance and we couldn't make it to the Passover. So Aaron, uh, sorry, so Moses goes and lets God know. And God says, okay. Okay. That because they couldn't keep the Passover as it was supposed to be kept. Because we know, as it says here in verse six, and there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. And those men said unto him, we are defiled by a, by a dead body of a man. Wherefore we kept back that we may not offer an offering unto the Lord in his appointed season among the children of Israel. And Moses said unto them, stand still and I will hear what the Lord will command concerning you. Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you or your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, or be in a journey far off, ye shall keep the Passover unto the Lord the fourteenth day of the second month at even, and shall eat, uh, uh, and it shall eat with it and keep with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Why would it be one month later? Because of dead bodies and traveling from distant lands. Well, hello. Why would you then think that the great multitude rapture would come in at true Passover time when the Gog Magog war of the end of Ezekiel 39 war and all of the burying of dead bodies and traveling from far distances. Why would we think? How could we think? that they would be taken or or arrive at the time of the great multitude rapture at Passover. They wouldn't. It's going to be second Passover, brothers and sisters, because of traveling from distant lands and being near and touching dead bodies. Seven months will equal the second Passover in the month of Iyar, the exact same month represented today as when Christ came and died for them on the cross in Aries. First group saved, Taurus. Beginning was called Taurus. The next group, he came to save, that was his light group, he came to save in Aries. He comes to warn them as the light in the end of days. He's going to come to warn them for 40 days to let these lost tri lost of the house of Israel, the world, know he's going to shine his light to let them know this is the final part. This is the end. It's time to wake up, receive the light. And when they come in, in the seventh year, it will be the seventh month at the time of the second Passover, which will represent the same Aries as when he originally came to save them. <clears throat> this is awesome. This is awesome. But do you know what? It's not over yet. What? You're trying, this is crazy. You can't do this to me. This is insane. Well, it gets better. We can even understand more. Watch this. Let me see where I am in my notes. See, I don't really usually have to go to them, do I? <coughs> 
What else? What did I have this one for? Let me see. Yeah, it just had to do with uh, unleavened bread, the 14th day of the second month. All right, we got that. Now what? Well, we still have Matthew, don't we? We've now been able to cover and to show why we have this connection to, to a Passover Luke group with Taurus, but still as a typology of Passover. And we just showed now Mark's portion and how Mark's portion can be connected to a Passover at the time of the rapture of the great multitude. And we've now shown the year end that it's seven months. Oh my goodness, it's so awesome. And that it would also be connected to Aries because they're his people. They're the ones he came to save because they were corrupted by the false light. But there's one more group. There's one more group. And it's that Matthew group. Matthew still needs to be saved. And for Matthew to be saved, what do we know about Matthew being saved? What did he say in Matthew 12? Okay, we'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> this is going to blow your mind. <laughs> so, what do we know about Matthew's group? Well, we're living in the age of what? We're now living in this period of time that is Pisces. Right? So, Passover right now is in Pisces. Right? So, we know... It's the time of Pisces. We are living in Pisces. Pisces is fish. Taurus revealed bride. Aries revealed mid-trib rapture. Pisces, wasn't Christ related to fish? Wasn't there something with fish relating to to a portion with Christ as well? Well, if we're living in the age of the flesh of Matthew and in this period of time that he's going to save them in has to relate to the third one. If the first one was Taurus and the second one was Aries, the third one has to be Pisces because that's what we're in. Who's left to be saved? The house of Judah. The house of Judah is left to be saved. And this portion of time in the house of Judah is a period of time during the fish. Do you remember when we taught on this? When we said, you know, how, how when um, Jesus came and he was talking about uh, um, the story of Jonah, We've done many teachings on this and connected many things with it that this did not yet happen. This was Christ speaking prophetically about the coming end of days, that he would come and warn the people as Jonah did to Nineveh. When Christ resurrected and fulfilled those 40 days with those disciples following him, did he go around as Jonah warning the people? No. It's prophetic. But we've all been taught all of our lies from Matthew. And they say, well, when you look at that, that's his 40 days. When you look at Matthew, it's because he was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. We know he wasn't. Because everywhere tells us on the third day. Jews will try to tell you that no, it just means any part of one day is a day. So even though it was all the 14th and uh, uh, part of the 14th and, and the 15th and part of the, the, the 16th, part of one and part of another, that's three days. No, it isn't. And you know why? Because in Matthew, it doesn't say three days. It says clearly three days and three nights. 
That is not one portion of a day. It is three full days and three full nights, which means it has to be sometime on the fourth day. You see? So when you read something and you get this, when we got this revelation, this was mind-blowing. The answer came to us from Luke. This is how powerful it is when you understand who the Gospels are speaking to. When you understand this from Luke, listen to what it said. He is starting in verse 24, verse starting verse 6. He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was with you in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, comma, and be crucified, comma, and the third day be risen again. You see, the count began when he was taken into the hands of sinful men. The following day, what? Right? In, in the morning portion, he was crucified. Then it was the Sabbath day. And then early in the morning on the third day is when he rose again. You see, this is when he rose on the third day. So you have the 14th, he has his Passover meal with, his, with the disciples. He has the Passover meal they, on the 14th, right? On the evening, starting the day before, on the evening of the 14th, he has the Passover meal. They go to the mountain and pray. Then they come and lay hands on him. So he's being delivered into the hands of sinful men. So a few hours, maybe three or so hours approximately, into the 14th day, starting in the evening after he ate, goes to the hill and pray. Boom, they come and they lay hands on him. It started on the evening of the 14th. In the morning of the 14th, he gets crucified. On the 15th, he's in the grave. And early in the morning of the third day, he resurrects. The total, not in the grave, but the total from hands of sinful men to being crucified to his resurrection was a total of about two and a half days. The third day is two and then a half day to the day. It was only two and a half days total. <clears throat> and most people know that, and this is where some people get confused because he was really only in the tomb, in the grave, for about a day and a half. That is a massive contradiction, people would tell you, from uh, what we're told from Matthew. You see, when you go to Matthew's um, story of, of Jonah, we're told no sign will be given, uh, sign of the prophet, except for the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. At Christ's crucifixion, at his death, and being put in the grave. Was he three full days and three full nights in the grave? Absolutely, 0%, 100%, never, not possible. It did not happen. This is prophetic. Do you understand? This is one of those things that is, that is a major contradiction, people will tell you, in Scripture. If you go to Mark's story, Listen to what he tells them. And this is where people go, they throw their arms up and they say, oh, it's a contradiction, it's a contradiction. And if you don't know about the understanding of the Gospels, of course it's a contradiction. He says, you know, they're, they're demanding a sign. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, why does this generation seek after a sign? Verily I say unto you, there shall no sign be given this generation. And he left and got in the ship. That's a major contradiction, isn't it? Because in Luke's, he said 40 days as Jonah was. And in Matthew, he said three days and three nights in the, in the whale's belly as he'll be in the heart of the earth. And yet in Mark's, he said they're getting no sign and he left. That is an absolute contradiction. Unless you know who the Gospels are speaking to. Without it, people will tell you all sorts of things to make it align. Because they'll show you everything from... And they don't realize that these are prophetic things that Christ is talking about. Because he never warned for 40 days and uh, for 40 days when he resurrected. He didn't do that as Jonah did. 
In Mark, he told them nothing. So how could that be if Luke just said it was 40 days as Jonah did? And then you get to Matthew and we're told it was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. When we know he resurrected on the third day and that included taken into the hands of sinful men, crucified and buried. So clearly Matthew's was also prophetic and we've shared on these things before. It is such a, a blessing to know these things because it's the revelation of the gospels that have revealed it all through the power of the spirit of God leading his bride guys, leading us in the revelation. <coughs> so now remember who are we looking for? We've covered Luke, we've covered Mark. Now we're looking for Matthew. And just to let you know again, Matthew, in the period of time of Passover now, we're in the fish, right? We're in the time of the fish. And it says, but the sign of the prophet Jonah in Matthew 12, verse 40, for as Jonah was three days and three nights. See, we've got clarity, don't we? This should have had everybody scratching their head. Whenever you go to somebody and they, they skirt around and tell you this, you had to say to yourself, but it says three days and three nights. It cannot be one portion of any. It has to be full three day and night, which means... This resurrection happens sometime on the fourth day. You get it? If it's three full days and three full nights, then his resurrection will be sometime on the fourth day. Listen to this. <clears throat> we know, and we have done some incredible videos recently <clears throat> on the revelation of the two witnesses. We now know that Yeshua Messiah is a typology of Joshua. And he is one of the two witnesses. And Zerubbabel, whoever the modern day Zerubbabel is, will be the other witness. Zerubbabel will be dealing with rebuilding everything in the new temple. And the, the Joshua portion, the Messiah portion, Yeshua, who is the high priest, hello, just like Joshua was, will be the one in direct line with the Father. He is the one. That is why the 144,000 will follow him where, wheresoever he goes. <clears throat> you see? Because he is one of the two witnesses. What do we know about the two witnesses? The two witnesses prophesy, do their work for the first Three and a half years of seals. I mean, sorry, of trumpets. Okay? For 1260 days, the first three and a half years of trumpets. When that time ends, when they have finished their testimony, the beast, the Antichrist, who was killed and sent to the pit, is going to come out of the pit. Remember, Satan gets cast down. Remember whose portion is it against? Just like Adam, it was Satan that corrupted them. Just like over here, it was the false light antichrist that corrupted this group. What happened at the end of seals? At the end of the six years of seals, antichrist was killed and he was destroyed like Daniel 7 told us. Now, Christ is here. The great multitude rapture happens in the seventh year, in the seventh month, at the second Passover now. We know that the, the five months remaining is when the Lord will make a covenant with all nations and starting trumpets, starting trumpets, they're going to start rebuilding the city and the streets and the temple for the first three and a half years. Zerubbabel is going to be the one over that, that, that one of the two witnesses. And Yeshua Messiah is going to be the other one as the high priest. When those three and a half years, those 1260 days are over, the temple's built and so forth, Satan is cast down. Just like Satan corrupted Adam and Eve here, Satan is now coming against this group. When Satan is cast down, as we read in Revelation 12, he's cast down. What does he do? He goes after them with a the flood. 
we know that this battle, this war is going to last two and a half years of the last three and a half years of trumpets. When he's cast down, what happens? The pit is opened. When the pit is opened, Antichrist, who was in there, is coming out. And those who were with him, they're coming out. This is how crazy mid-trumpets, I mean, you've got to understand, this is the end of days we're talking about. It's going to be craziness. And what happens? This is where the two witnesses finish their testimony. This is where they get cut off. And when they're cut off, what happens? There's a war that lasts two and a half years. Okay? What happens? Then he makes war against them. We showed from Daniel that this war lasts from Daniel 9 and from Daniel 12, that this war lasts for two and a half years. Which brings us to the end of the sixth year of trumpets, which is two and a half of the last three and a half years. What happens at the end of those two and a half years? The two witnesses are killed. So right near the end of the sixth trumpet, within days, at the end of the sixth year of trumpets, the two witnesses are killed. And how long are they dead for? Three days and a half. Clearly, if you're getting to the point of half, this has to mean three full days. And a portion of the next. What did Matthew say? Matthew, in the prophetic future of being like Jonah, said that he would be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights, which means sometimes in the fourth day. When do the two witnesses resurrect? After three days? Early in the morning of that fourth day? Early in the morning of that final day, which would be after three days and three nights. Check this out. We're in Pisces, right? When does this cutoff take place? This cutoff will take place at, well, if it starts at Tishri, three and a half years would put it at Passover, first Passover. So this cutting off will take place at first Passover during the time of what? During the time of Passover and the fish. Hello. Pisces. The fish. The constellation it is right now is the fish. So at this time, And then they're cutting off in the connection that's connected to the fish. When is it going to happen? Look at the word whale. It's a huge fish. Hello. During the time when Passover to the Jews is the time of the fish. You want to see something wild? It gets even better. The root word. Can you believe it? Can you believe that the root word for a huge fish being a whale, the which is only used once in Matthew, for Christ talking about his death and resurrection again, but this time for Judah? Do you know that in uh, Jonah chapter 2, he knew that he had to do it? Listen to what he says. This is the typology. This is Jonah, but in the in the typology of Christ. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. You see, it's like Christ saying, look, I'm going to do it. I said I would do it and I'm going to do it. Well, what was it all about? It was about. Oops, it came from chapter one. It was about him being three days and three nights in the belly of the fish. He knew that he had to do this. 
right? He's like, all right, I'm going to do it. In the typology of prophets being Christ, right? Speaking for Christ, he knows. He made a vow that he would do this. And this is that vow that's still to come during the time of the fish. But I want you to see something so awesome. Because this word being used once only in Matthew is because it's for the time of Matthew during trumpets. But look at where it comes from. You want to see how awesome this is? This word that goes to the root of it is 5490, and it's only used one time. And it's found in Luke chapter 16, verse 26. Check this out. Let's start in, uh, let's start in verse 22. Are you ready for this? When he is in, when he is dead as one of the two witnesses, and he's going to be what? In the belly of the earth for a full three days and a full three nights. And on the fourth day is when they're going to stand up. Listen to this. The root word of the word whale. Can you believe it? The word whale. You want to see where it's connected? I told you. I told you guys in the past that the group of old prophets of, of the, the Abrahams and of all of those past, they're not in the third heaven. They are waiting. Remember? They are waiting in a place until the last day. Okay? Remember what Daniel was told? But go thy way till the end be. Remember we did a study recently on the word end? Go thy way until the end be, which is when the Lord returns, feet down on the Mount of Olives. When does he return after the feet down on the Mount of Olives? An hour after he comes up from three days and three nights from the grave. One hour later. And what does it say? Go thy way, Daniel, till the end be, for thou shalt rest. And stand in thy lot at the end of days. Okay? And you're going to stand in your lot at the end of days. It's not only Daniel. It's all the Old Testament saints. Abraham, all of them. And that word for whale found only in Matthew is talking about going down to the pit, or not to the pit, but going into a place. To do what? To do what? To bring back a people in the last day for their promised millennial reign? <clears throat> Let's have a look. Luke 16, the word comes from gulf, from the word whale. Can you believe it? Starting in verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. See, so this beggar is still there right now as we speak and will remain there till the Lord comes out with them all at the end of the sixth year of trumpets after the three days and three nights. They're there right now in a waiting place. And listen to what it says. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. So all these other guys that weren't the Lord's, they're all in torment right now. They're in hell. But they could see this holding place, this other place where, Adam, where Abraham is, and sees Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and thou art tormented. Here it comes. 
And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. That so which uh, that so they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. So you have a place of hell and you have a place where Abraham and the others are in his bosom waiting at this place where there's a great gulf dividing the two of them. And this great gulf, which we know is where hell is in between hell and where Abraham and those in his bosom are waiting. And that place is when Christ fulfills the time of the fish. Did you get that? When Christ will fulfill the time of the fish as one of the two witnesses who after three days and nights or three days and a half, meaning after three days and three nights, sometime on that fourth day, being in the heart of the earth as the fish is represented by in the whale, found in Matthew only, where do you think he's going to be? He's going to be in that great gulf, rescuing those who were for the promise. And that's why when we go to the seventh trumpet, as the Lord returns then feet down on the Mount of Olives, it then says, with great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders and other fell on their faces saying, we give thanks. We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art, which, uh, which was and art to come because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned and the nations were angry and thy wrath is come and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward to thy servants, the prophets and the saints and to them that fear thy name, small and great and shouldest destroy them which destroyed the earth. The seventh, the second battle, that final sword battle. But who gets resurrected? Who gets resurrected when the Lord comes? Those who have been waiting. To us, it's like thousands of years. But to them, waiting there, it's probably only days as well. Not to those in hell, but to those in Abraham's bosom. To those in Abraham's bosom, when the Lord's portion being fulfilled in the fish is represented by the period of time in the fish that we are in which is Nisan, which starts the, the, the biblical year. It will equal the time when he will end up in the gulf or the heart of the earth, just like Matthew. So what did we come to understand, brothers and sisters? Those in the spirit, with the spirit of God, the bride of Christ, the sons of God and the co-heirs, the preordained co-heirs with Christ. Who he never came to save because they were predestined to be saved. They are the beginning. They are Taurus. And that beginning in the portion of flesh was connected to Passover in Taurus. Which now is in Taurus but is the month of Sivan. And that the group that he created of light beings that got corrupted by the false light, that he came to save on the cross during Ares as the lamb. 
he will come and save and bring them in in the great multitude rapture in the seventh month of the seventh year of seals at the second Passover. You know how awesome I, you know how excited I was and how awesome it was when I when I realized that today? Because second Passover was something we've never had fulfilled in our timeline yet. Now we do. And we can understand it's because of the death and coming from far distances. It totally lines up. It completely makes sense. And that when they would, when this would happen and why it would be the second is because that's when he saved them. He saved them at the time of what is now the second, but was the first when he was here because it was the lamb. That's unbelievable. But we know there's another 6,000 year period where he's got to come and save another group. And in this third group, it's in Pisces. Taurus, Aries, Pisces. Pisces is the fish. And the fish is the representation of what he will be in for a full three days and three nights. And when he's there, because it's the end, when he resurrects, he's bringing those that were in holding there with him. Do you know why? Let me finish with this. I have no idea how long it's been. <laughs> I don't know what time it is. In, in playing time, I can't see the clock time. I know it's almost 10.30, but I, I mean, I mean, how long the video is? I can't see now. So anyways, what, what do we see? What do we know about this connection when he now is represented as going into the heart of the earth? What do we know happens, brothers and sisters? What do we know happens? Remember we talked about this the other day? The reason why it's only found in Matthew is because when the earthquake rent, right? The rocks rent, the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints of those that slept arose. What is this connected to? <laughs> you got it. Matthew's Passover, brothers and sisters. Matthew's Passover my brothers and sisters. And do you remember what they said? Starting in Matthew 27, verse 26, uh, verse 62, listen to this, going into 64. Now the next day that followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, sir, we remember that that deceiver, right? They're calling Christ a deceiver, said, while he was yet alive, after three days, he will rise again. After three days, he will rise again. You see, they were confused by it thinking back then. But we know built into these stories, this prophecy in the is to come. Command it. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, he is risen from the dead. So the last error, think prophetic end of days, shall be worse than the first when he fulfilled it the first time. Last, first, when he came in Aries, when he will come in Pisces, which is why it's after three days of being in the heart of the earth because they had heard and heard that story of him being three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, just like Jonah was. But it was not the case in the was. Or in the is. It's the prophetic is to come, brothers and sisters. And what happened? What happened? Those that slept. Resurrected. Why do you think this is only in Matthew? Because the story is connected to when he's three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And when he's going to rise again, bringing with him those who are down in that gulf. Moses and all of those saints and all of the prophets. This is freaky crazy. 
all of it fulfilled, brothers and sisters. It, think on how many threes we've talked about. Pre, mid, post, Luke, Mark, Matthew, Spirit, Son, Father, right? Uh, there's Antichrist, false prophet, Satan. This is awesome. So awesome. Man, I know there was a lot I could keep going, man, but I got to stop because I want you guys, and you're probably going to need to to go back and watch again, no doubt about it. But this was the clincher that I wanted to share with you guys. That the Passovers of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, or Luke, Mark, and Matthew, that in a roundabout way, they are all Passovers. They are all connected to Passovers. But in the current day and age that we're in, they're not. Because they've moved. They've moved over the thousands of years. But the first one was what is now the Feast of Weeks. The second one, which is Mark's, was in Aries. But now is the second month of Ayar. And Matthew, the portion of the flesh of the time we're in, will be and have its connection to Pisces. All about the fish. Brothers and sisters, I pray this blesses you. I pray you dig into it and pull out more stuff and come and join us in the forum. Ask questions, share these things with us and keep digging because we will continue to diligently, diligently seek him knowing that those who believe he is Lord, who have faith that he is Lord, and who diligently seek him, knowing that he is a rewarder of those who do, shall not taste of death and be standing before the Son of Man. I love you guys. God bless you. God bless your families. We'll talk to you all soon. Bye for now.